Okay, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on uh, the pathology of asthma. Okay, so in this video what we're going to do is begin by looking at the anatomy of the tracheobronchial tree within the lungs. Okay, so the structure for this video is we'll firstly start by looking at the uh, different lobes of the lung, and then, uh, well both of the lungs of course, at the right and the left, and then we'll look at the tracheobronchial tree, okay? And it's uh, the tracheobronchial tree that's going to be affected by the disease uh, asthma, which is why we're just beginning with a little bit of anatomy in this playlist. Okay, so the tracheobronchial tree. All right, so we'll start off uh, with the basic division of the right and left lung, uh, lungs into, uh, into lobes. Okay, so... Let's start off very basically then. We'll start off with the right lung. Okay, so here comes the right lung. Okay, right, so it comes over like this and goes up like this. Okay, so this represents the right lung. It's sort of the typical shape for uh, someone to draw a lung. Okay, so the right lung has two major fissures within it. One here known as the horizontal fissure, so I'll just label that up. Um, where am I going to put this? I'll stick it here. Okay, so this is the horizontal fissure, and basically it's an indentation uh, into the lung. So basically, you could stick your hand into that fissure and separate um, this portion of the lung up here, which is known as the upper lobe, from the portions below. Okay, so this is the horizontal fissure. So it's a great big crack in the lung, basically, that you could easily stick your fingers into. Okay, then there is another big fissure down here, which is known as the oblique fissure. Okay, now oblique kind of means diagonal. Okay, so you can see why uh, this would be called the diagonal fissure. So it's the oblique fissure. Oblique is kind of the old uh, word for diagonal. Right, okay, and you can see that these two huge fissures, which you can easily stick your hands into, separate the uh, right lung into three clear lobes, okay? An upper lobe, a middle lobe, and a lower lobe. Okay, so this lobe up here is the upper lobe of the right lung. Okay, so you must specify uh, which lung you are talking about always. This is the upper lobe. This here is the middle lobe of the right lung, okay? And then finally, underneath the oblique fissure down here, right down here, this is the lower lobe of the uh, right lung. Okay, so, now we've done the right lung, let's move on to uh, the left lung. Okay, so, the left lung is slightly different shaped from the um, uh, right lung, okay, so I'll leave a little bit more gap in between the two, okay, and that's because uh, the, it's got a notch, basically, where the heart is going to be, because the heart is going to be around here, remember, so what has to happen is the lung has to kind of come out a little bit to make space for where the heart is going to sit here, okay, but then it just continues on and it's the same sort of shape, okay? So it's like um, the right lung, but you've taken a sort of gouge out of it where you're going to stick the heart here, okay? And fittingly, this sort of notch that you have created here is known as the cardiac notch. So it's the notch that you've made uh, to make space for, for the heart. Okay, now, uh, the left lung also has uh, a fissure in it, but it only has one fissure, and it has a fissure coming down like this, and this is what's known as the oblique fissure of the uh, left lung, okay? So again, it's a diagonal fissure, okay? And I've realised that I've spelt oblique, <laughs> oblique, it should have been a Q there, sorry, not a G, oblique, okay, so this is the oblique fissure. I do apologise for my spelling lapse there, oblique, I don't know what that means. Right, uh, so oblique fissure there, and it separates the uh, left lung into two clear lobes here. One massive great upper lobe here, okay, and then the lower lobe over there. 
Okay, but don't be tricked into thinking that the lower lobe is much, much smaller than the upper lobe. Yes, from this picture it looks much, much smaller, but when you think about this crack and how it's uh, going through the two, basically it's sort of like goes in this direction upwards so if you were to put your hand in you'd originally put it in like this but then you'd have to follow it round and it would go like that okay so the lower lobe stretches uh, much further back basically than you would imagine okay so this is the lower lobe of the left lung and the same is true for uh, the lobes of the um, right lung okay so this is the lower lobe right so now all we need to do is stick on um, the trachea, the carina, and the right and left bronchus to complete this little picture here. So, let's put the trachea here. Okay, so the trachea is the main uh, pipe that is bringing gas from the larynx, okay, and it's bringing gas into the lungs. In fact, it's the only pipe that's bringing gas into the lungs. Okay, so this is the trachea. Okay, and then the trachea bifurcates around here into two portions. One which enters the right lung, and then the other which enters the left lung, like so. Now, uh, the right bronchus, as it's called, which is this um, division that's going into the right lung, this um, comes off at a much sharper angle, basically, so it descends at a steeper angle. Okay, so... The, much steeper than the left bronchus anyway. The right bronchus is often said to descend at about a 45 degree angle. So let me uh, explain that more with a bigger picture down here. Okay, so if this is the trachea here, then it's going to branch off into two. One is the right bronchus here, and here is the left bronchus here. Okay, now if we were to measure, if we were to put an imaginary line there, and then measure the angle which the right bronchus is coming off at. So measure this angle here. That is usually around 45 degrees, so half of a right angle. Okay, let me bring this up a little bit. Whereas, if we were to measure the angle at which the uh, left bronchus comes off over here, that is more around 30 degrees. So this one is steeper. The right bronchus is steeper than the left bronchus. Okay, and this is why if you um, manage to inhale a small body of some sort, uh, so a small body is just the fancy word for some small object, basically, okay, and it uh, goes down your trachea uh, and gets to this bifurcation, it's more likely to go down the right bronchus than it is to go down the left bronchus. So if you have choked and inhaled something, um, then it will generally go it will generally be found in the right bronchus if it gets down that far, basically, than in the um, left lung. Okay, uh, so one more little thing to say is that the bifurcation of the trachea into the right bronchus and the left bronchus um, is what is known as the carina. Okay, so we say that the trachea bifurcates at the carina um, and then splits into the right and left um, bronchus. So we would call this sort of bit here where it's sort of undecided as to whether it's the right or left bronchus territory we would call this bit the carina here okay right now let's begin talking about the tracheobronchial tree then okay so we might as well use this picture that we've already got here we won't be able to use this for the left bronchus clearly but for the right bronchus we should be able to use this okay so what happens soon is that the right bronchus, once it gets into the lung, starts to bifurcate into two. Okay, so we'll show this happening. So it splits into two separates, and I'm just going to have to sort of try and edge that round, that writing. 